Greetings. Now let us learn about the role of botulinum toxin injection in GI endoscopy, otherwise known as Botox. Botox is typically available in 100 units uh, in a while. And here is a Botox vial with 100 units. And uh, this is a very fine whitish uh, powder uh, that is sealed in this vial. And when you use a Botox uh, injection, the Botox basically interrupts the communication uh, between the nerve and the muscle, and the muscle spasm could be relieved by injection of Botox. So there are a few precautions one needs to take when preparing the Botox uh, uh, injection procedure. So here is the Botox. We have a 100 unit vial. So what you do is you take a 5 cc syringe uh, that is uh, uh, with sterile saline uh, without any preservative and uh, you should prepare the Botox solution by injecting this 5 cc syringe into the Botox vial very slowly. It's important to keep that thing in mind. I mean very slowly. If you inject fast, you are going to destroy the Botox. So it's important to gently inject Botox and gently roll the vial, not shake, just roll the vial and once the Botox solution is reconstituted and you take that in back into that 5 cc syringe uh, very very slowly. When it comes to preparing the Botox solution the key is taking your time and doing things slowly. When it comes to injection into the vial inject very slowly. Don't shake the vial, just roll the vial and then when you want to take the solution from the vial into the syringe, slowly aspirate into that syringe. So when you take that back into the uh, syringe, it will contain 100 units in 5 cc of saline. So each cc has about 20 units. Then you take an injection catheter and then prime that like we do and you should be ready for injection. There are some other precautions that we need to take care of when it comes to Botox injection. And uh, here is an elderly patient who has achalasia not a fit candidate for either balloon dilation or for peroral endoscopic myotomy or for Heller myotomy. These are the different ways that uh, echolasia can be treated. Because a patient is not suitable for those conditions, uh, we decided that Botox may be a better option because it relieves the spasm of the lower esophageal sphincter and allows the patient to swallow. One important thing is make sure you protect the eyes of everybody, including the patient. If the Botox enters into the eye, it will cause paralysis of the eye muscles and will cause diplopia. We don't want that. So make sure you cover the eye and also before the procedure starts, before the injection starts, make sure that everybody is wearing protective eye gear. Important to do this. All right. So now we have taken the precautions, we prepared the solution, and we are ready to inject uh, into the lower esophageal sphincter 
in echolasia because in echolasia there is spasm of the lower esophageal sphincter. It doesn't allow uh, the sphincter to open up when we eat. So th that results in difficulty swallowing. So when we have the spasm and you want to inject with all the precautions, you get the scope down to the lower esophageal sphincter, get your needle out. Uh, typically we should use a 23 gauge injection catheter and then we inject into the sphincter Botox. When it comes to injection of Botox, you have a 5 cc syringe. It's not a 10 cc syringe. The 5 cc syringe, every 1 ml has 20 units of Botox. So you should inject slowly and you should say half ml so that the endoscopist knows that he has delivered 10 units and 1 ml so that the endoscopist knows that he you have injected 20 units. So important to make sure that the injection, as the injection is happening, you should mention the amount of injection that has been delivered. Do not try to inject 5 ml straight. So you should inject half ml weight. If the endoscopist says inject more, inject another half ml. That's how the injection should be done with Botox. So important to keep this thing in mind. Small amounts, 0.5 ml injection, stop. Another 0.5 ml, reaching 1 ml, stop. And say it loudly, I injected 10 units, 20 units, because you know 1 ml has 20 units. So if you finish 1 ml injection, you should say 20 units delivered. And that is really critical. So now we got the injection into the lower esophageal sphincter and we're injecting Botox and we should inject at least into different quadrants, typically four quadrants. And with the injection, the muscle relaxes and the spasm gets relieved and the lower esophageal sphincter opens up. And with the relief of spasm, the patient will be able to eat. So let us look at it from the endoscopy viewpoint of view. As you can hear, see here, there is a tight esophageal sphincter and hard to go through that. And you start injecting into the lower esophageal sphincter, uh, four quadrants. And some people use eight injections, four quadrants very low into the sphincter and a little bit up into the sphincter uh, so that they inject, you know, 10 to 15 units per injection eight times. I typically try to use four injections, 20 units each. And what happens with that is with the, by the time we complete the injection, the muscle tries to relax and you should be able to go down easily and the spasm gets relieved. So we talked about one major role of Botox in GI endoscopy, that is management of elderly, elderly patients with echolasia who are not candidates for any other therapy, either pneumatic balloon dilation, paroral endoscopic myotomy, or POEM procedure, or the laparoscopic Heller's myotomy. Now let us look at what are the other indications for Botox. Where else does we, do we use Botox injection? Botox injection can be used to treat gastroparesis related to pyloric spasm. And in this case, we go to the stomach and inject into the pyloric muscle to relieve the spasm. And again, these tend to be temporary. Uh, some have also tried injecting uh, Botox into the sphincter of OD for patients with sphincter of OD spasm. But I must say, this is not something that is commonly practiced nowadays. Colorectal surgeons and gastroenterologists have also used 
Botox injection to treat anal fissure by injecting into the muscle. You relax the muscle, better blood flow to the sphincter area or the break in the lining for better healing. Now let us look at complications of Botox injection with special reference to Botox injection in patients with echolasia. I must add here, it is very important to protect eyes of patients and all the members of the endoscopy team when Botox is being injected so as to avoid accidental spill and cause uh, damage to the eyes. So that's something I'm hoping that we all take care of that. So now, what are the complications to the patient? Uh, sometimes Botox uh, injection could cause some chest pain, tends to be very transient. And with the relief of the uh, spasm, patients may have acid reflux and heartburn. And uh, people have noticed that Botox could cause some fibrosis that makes uh, surgery difficult if a patient were to have Botox injection and then later need to go for surgery. So fibrosis is another side effect from Botox injection. So in summary, we have talked about Botox injection, the precautions that one need to take in preparing the solution. Try and be very gentle so that you don't destroy the medication and protect the eyes. And when you're injecting Take a 5cc syringe and inject 0.5 ml per each shot and try to speak loudly what was injected, like either 0.5 ml, 1 ml, whatever, or 10 units, 21 units of Botox injected. I hope this is useful. Thank you.